16, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my commandment, love one another. Here ends the reading on this holy word. This week, we will continue on in our sermon series on how we worship God. Now, last week, we talked about our need to make sure we're using our time wisely and focusing on God and worshiping Him, worshiping Him in all that we do. And so this week, we will discuss further how it is that we worship God. Now, I'll remind you of a little something from last week. I told you that if you only worship God one hour each week, then you are worshiping him for one out of 168 hours that you have in a week. So if we want to increase that time, what do we do with the other 167 hours in our week? Okay, well, I, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a break here. Let's say that you sleep the eight hours recommended each night. So you can take another 56 hours away from your total that you need to be worshiping God. Now you are down to 111 hours to worry about each week. Okay, 111 hours. So if you're in a public place for, say, 50 hours a week, then when you're on your own or at home, you can praise God for at least 61 hours a week. And that's pretty good, right? 61? Well, sure it is. But the question I must ask is, why are we so dismissive of praising God in those 50 hours a week that we spend in public? Why is it that we think worship can only be done in private? Well, you might want to point to uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, which says this. When you pray... Don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. That might be the reason why you feel as if you can't worship in public. And that could be a valid point, right? But the verse does not say that you cannot worship in public. And even it doesn't really say that you cannot pray in public. See, the verse what it means is this, you shouldn't be praying in public just so other people can see and hear you pray. If that is the only reason why you are doing it, just to be seen as someone who will pray to the Lord, then there is no reward in that. But if you're doing it earnestly and honestly, it is perfectly fine to pray in public. So if we can worship in public, how do we do that? Well, the answer is in how we live our lives. It is found in our scripture for today. And specifically, we can find it in John chapter 15, verse 12, which says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. When you hear those words, that you love one another as I have loved you, what is it that comes to your mind? Do you immediately think this? Oh, I don't know about that, Pastor. I'm not sure I can do that. Love others as Jesus has loved me? That sounds pretty hard to do. I mean, have you seen the people out there? 
Have you seen how crazy they are these days? Have you seen how much sin they are committing? I'm supposed to love them as Jesus loved me? Well, let me answer each of those questions for you. Is it hard to love others as Jesus has loved us? Yes, it absolutely is hard. It might be the hardest thing that Jesus asks us to do. However, it is also one of the two greatest commandments that he has given us, to love God and to love others. See, being someone that produces fruit for the kingdom of God is not easy. It has never been easy, and it will never be easy. Indeed, Jesus tells that, him, uh, tells that to us himself. It is not easy to follow him. But it is of the utmost importance that we do so, that we love others the way that Jesus has loved us. Our purpose in how we worship God is to honor God, to honor him for what he has done for us. See, he has already given us the keys to his kingdom. And if that is the case, don't you think that that means we should at least try to follow what it is he has asked us to do, and that is to love others. The next question, have I seen the people out there and how crazy they are these days? I don't know where the idea of that a pastor lives in a fishbowl outside of the world comes from. Oh, you might live in a fishbowl because everyone can see what you're doing, right, as a pastor, but we are still part of the world. We see it. Uh, and let me answer that question for you by telling you a little story. So this year, in addition to coaching Little League Baseball, I am also umpiring baseball games. And if you want to see how crazy and unlovable people can be, go umpire a baseball game and call their kid out on a close play. I cannot tell you how many names I have been called in the last month, but I can tell you that many of them have not been very flattering. I have begun to question my own eyesight because of the number of times people have told me that I am blind or that I need to go get my eyes checked. In a recent game, I called a young man out at third base on a close play and his response was to take off his helmet, try to throw it, and then to start out after me. Now, I am not sure what a 13-year-old boy thought was going to happen once he got to me, but he was pretty bound and determined to let me know that I had made the wrong call. Now, I thank God that his third base coach grabbed him very quickly and turned him around and got him to the bench. You know, when people ask me why am I umpiring, I like to just joke with them, well, I'm just a glutton for punishment. I enjoy people yelling at me and telling me I'm wrong. But the truth is this, someone has to do it, right? Someone has to umpire the games or they can't be played, and it's another chance for me to serve the community, even if it is difficult at times. And so what I have found in my own life is loving others in those moments is very difficult. It's hard to love others when they're yelling at you because you're simply trying to do your job, right? Now, our last question, and perhaps our most important one when it comes to loving others, is this. Have you seen how much sin people of the world are committing? Well, of course, the answer is yes. I see it as well. But the sins that people are committing in the world is not a reason for us not to show them the love of Jesus. It is the exact reason why we need to show them the love of Jesus. This church and all churches exist to bring others to know the love of Jesus Christ. At least that is why we are supposed to exist. And those people of the world that are sinning, they don't need us to simply tell them about their sin. What they need us to do is to tell them about Jesus. They need you to help them, to lead them to know Jesus. 
Somewhere along the lines, we as Christians have lost that thought. Somewhere along the line, we began to be more concerned about the sins of others than helping them to know Jesus. I heard a youth pastor give a sermon recently online, and he put it this way, and I thought this was a great way of thinking about it. He was talking to a young man, and the young man asked him, do I need to stop doing drugs before I become a Christian? The youth pastor's response was, no. Now the young man was flabbergasted, as maybe you are by that response, right? He thought the youth pastor had misheard him, so again he asked him, no, you don't understand. Do I need to stop using drugs before I become a Christian? And again the youth pastor said, no. And the kid said, I need you to explain that to me, and maybe you need me to explain it to you as well this morning. The youth pastor said to him, do you clean yourself before you take a shower? Like, do you take baby wipes and scrub yourself down and then get in the shower? And the young man said, no. He said, well, there you go. You see, you come to Jesus to get yourself clean. And I promise that once you do, the two of you will work out all the other problems in your life that you need to leave behind. See, I think we need to remind ourselves of that as well. If we can help lead people to Christ, ones that have sin in their lives, as we all do, then Jesus will take it from there. He will show them what it is they need to change in their lives. So let's let him be the one to do so. Producing fruit for the kingdom can be done the best way I believe when we show others the love that Jesus has for them. There is nothing we can say that can possibly compare to what Jesus has already done for them. And when we do this, when we love others as Jesus has loved us, I believe that is the greatest act of worship that we can perform. So let us commit ourselves to loving others showing them how to come to Jesus and praising the Lord when they do. Amen. My challenge for you this week is this. It is a hard one. Love others the way Jesus has loved you, even when it's hard to do so.